What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 7 of our Liverpool FC Let's Play here in Football Manager 2020. Today it is a double header, two humongous games. We're going to be taking on Arsenal who are our big title rival and also of course, well our other rival, Manchester United. Yes, a double header here, two games both at home, both on TV within four days of each other. Hopefully we can come through this strong. Uh, there's quite a lot to cover today along with the two matches so we're not going to show any highlights but just to quickly breeze over what you've missed. First and foremost we beat Burnley 2-1 here. Arigi with two goals in this game including a 93rd minute winner. Yes by the skin of our teeth we made it through that one and following on from that a few good little wins. Starting off with a result in the Prem against Tottenham. A 1-0 victory. Wijnaldum who has chipped in with a fair few goals as of late with the goal. And, uh, well, following on from that win, uh, you can see we then won 2-0 with Wijnaldum grabbing another and Dybala making sure we made it through. And with that, we're into the Carabao Cup semi-final where you can see we've been drawn against championship side Reading. Uh, meanwhile, in the FA Cup, we beat Tottenham 5-0. Crazy result this one. We destroyed them. There's a name here that we're going to talk about in just a second because as well as all the, the matches that have been played... We've dabbled a little in the transfer market. And yes, Erling Haaland is one of the players who managed to get in. Of course, this guy, you've probably heard good things about him. He got a hat-trick on his Champions League debut for Salzburg this year, the 19-year-old. We've spent some money to bring him in as an impact sub. And uh, yeah, £23 million we've actually paid for him. And, well, he started off well, didn't he, with two goals in his debut against Tottenham. And following on from that, he grabbed another as we beat Championship side Reading in a good little convincing performance playing a very rotated team, and that was all ahead of, of course, the two games today. I kind of had to have one eye ahead of them. But anyway, we have spent money on Haaland, who is a tremendous addition. I'm sure many of you have picked him up already in your Football Manager saves, but he is not the only bit of transfer business that has been going on here. So let's discuss it, shall we? Um, so if we look, Haaland is the only new addition at the moment, although we have one signing agreed for the end of the year and uh, one more in progress. On the outs, we have sold a player, and that is Shakiri. £33 million for him. A good little player, but a player who wasn't registered for our Champions League squad. To be honest, wasn't particularly wowed by his contribution uh, and just decided to move him on. And while you might notice, we've brought in here a right winger who's left-footed and... Well, no, sorry, we've sold a right winger who's left-footed and we've brought in a, in a striker, and that's because... We have a few other transfer dealings going on, and one of those is selling Origi, who is a striker, Haaland's natural replacement. And, uh, well, Origi and Haaland are pretty much coming in for identical prices. You know, what we're losing in uh, money for Haaland's transfer fee, we are gaining from Origi's. And I think when you compare them, one of those players is significantly better than the other. I think it's a really good bit of business if we can get it done, especially because Haaland is on smaller wages. But yes, Origi on his way to Crystal Palace for 24 million. And, well, the player that we brought in to replace Shakiri, or at least we're eyeing up to replace Shakiri, is Suso. Now, this guy is 26 years old. He's only just turned 26. He's a very good player, but the big kind of draw to this guy is the fact he is homegrown at club. Yes, of course, he's the player who was released by Liverpool, went and established himself for Milan, has been pr pretty good this year for them. And uh, yeah, he seems like an identical replacement of Sh sorts for Shakiri, who is younger and homegrown. And uh, well, between Suso and Haaland coming in and Origi and uh, Shakiri being sold, the net spend works out at less than £5 million. And I think it leaves us significantly better off. We have made one other signing, and that is Sergio uh, Reguilon, um, who we've signed from, uh, well, you can see here, we've signed him from. Uh, Real Madrid. He was on loan at Sevilla this year. He's actually got one of the best average ratings in um, La Liga, but he comes in as a really, really, really great backup left back, and I now feel like we have our defensive situation sorted. This year, one of the problems we've had is we've had Hendricks and Fabinho who can slot in at right back, but really only Hendricks is a player who I feel like we can play at left back, but he's right-footed. I wanted to get a more permanent solution, and I feel like with Regil on here, we've done that for free. Um, he's an amazing signing, to be honest. He's just turned 23. Absolutely superb player. Only joining us at the end of the year. We couldn't sign him any sooner. But as a backup to Andy Robertson, he looks absolutely superb. Just kind of ticks all the boxes. And I feel like with this transfer business, I'm almost done. I am looking at signing Mohamed Darami here, who's a player I had a very good experience with last year. Um, I kind of want to just take a chance on him, despite the low scouting recommendation level. Because... 
yeah, I, as I said, I had a good experience with him. And also, I saw that Arsenal and Tottenham wanted him. And if he turns out to be a world beater, I don't want him going to a divisional rival. And I wouldn't have forgiven myself for not going in for him. So anyway, that's kind of what we've done in the transfer business. I would love to know what you think of that in terms of the Origi and Shakiri sales and then the three new additions. This is, of course, assuming that Suso joins us and Origi leaves us. Those are still ongoing, so maybe they'll be done by the Arsenal game, although that might be a tiny bit ambitious. In terms of how things look right now, of course... Doing great in the Carabao Cup, winning that first leg convincingly against Reading. Still in all the other cup competitions. However, if we look at the league here, um, we currently trail Arsenal by 8 points. Or no, 7 points. We need 8 points to go top. Um, but the reason for that is that we've played three fewer games than them. So there's going to be a little bit of fixture congestion. And of course, today we're going to be taking on third place United and first place to Arsenal. So, yeah, I guess we look at our matches now as kind of the big pressure point here. These are matches we have to win if we want to win the league. These are absolutely huge. The good news is that with the new signings and sales and all that good stuff, we are almost at full strength. There is one player missing and it's a significant player. Van Dijk is suspended for today's game against Manchester United. As a result of the back, Matip comes in. Goldson goes onto the bench. You can see we've got Haaland, who is going to be hopefully that impact sub for us. Three goals in his first two games at the club is good, although they were both starts. And uh, well, when you look at the rest of the team, we're pretty much at full strength other than that one kind of rather large, I guess, omission of Van Dijk from the team sheet. So let's get into this, shall we? We're going to be taking on Manchester United. Of course, this only match one of today's double header. It's a, it's a tasty couple of games. These are two games that could very much decide which way the title goes this year. I can't believe how well Arsenal are doing. I'm a little bit miffed they're doing as well as they are. Uh, they've played 21 games. They've lost one. They've drawn three. Yeah, they're, they're causing us some issues is probably the fairest way to describe it. Anyway, hopefully the teams warm up a little bit quicker. I'm just thinking if there's anything else to talk about. I guess we do still have £20 million in the bank, but I do feel like with the business that we've done now, we've solved a lot of the areas of concern that I had. I am wondering if the best course of action now is just to invest heavily into youth for the future. I feel like with the 20 or so million pounds that we've got still kind of lingering in our bank balance, unless we were to get a monstrous offer for a player, say 150 million for Firmino, not that we've had any interest in Firmino, despite my earlier discussions in previous episodes, but barring any kind of huge deal like that, I don't see us dabbling again in the transfer market for any kind of immediate first team impact players. But I feel like between Haaland and Suso, assuming both those deals get done, and with Regil on joining us at the end of the year, um, we're kind of in a great position. We do need to defend this here, however. Martial, Alexander-Arnold wins it and gets a clear to Salah. Of course, the overall squad balance, I'm quite happy with. You know, we've been rotating things a little bit. Um, but the significance of Suso being homegrown can't be underestimated. It's one of the reasons why I decided to sanction that transfer. You know, he could trigger a £36 million release clause in his contract. Uh, both Manchester United and Arsenal have shown some interest in him as well. Obviously, we've got to try and wrestle him away from them. Um, but yeah, homegrown players is going to be a shorter-term problem here at Liverpool. It's something that I've definitely got to factor in. And Suso is just a tremendous homegrown talent that not many teams have the option of signing. And I kind of want to exercise that option. Anyway, let's see how we get on here. We're pressing high. Did Barlow win it there? And then, unfortunately, just gave it straight back away. I thought we were about to take advantage of him winning it in such an advanced position. Unfortunately, they've dealt with it. But we are still cooking something up here. Alexander-Arnold on the right. Dinks it to Mane back post. How has he squeezed that in? Inverted wingers seem so good this year. If you're using an inverted winger in FM20, please let me know how is it doing for you. Because for me, Mane is absolutely superb. It's his 12th goal of the season. Alexander-Arnold with his wonderful right foot just drilling it hard and flat across. And De Gea, no chance of stopping that going into that top corner. That was... You know, perfectly placed, really. Robertson's picked up a little bit of a knock, so we need to be wary of that. Uh, I saw his condition was down in the 70s. Hopefully that's nothing too major to worry about. We have got a set piece here. Half clear, Dybala. Now with Joe Gomez, and, well, that was an, that was an interesting highlight. I'm not sure what we, we were being shown there. Please let me know if, if you have any idea. Um, right, they're trying to build from the back again. A lot of these highlights are start with United having the ball in their own half and then giving us the ball. I'm hoping that it's going to happen again here, although they are moving the ball quite nicely up the pitch. It's now with Martial on this left-hand side. He drives it across. Alisson collects. 
you can see early on possession fairly close after 25 minutes we have edged out shots we've looked I guess slightly more imposing going forward and while we're going forward again here Jordan Henderson springs the ball across to Robertson now back with Dybala of course as the advanced playmaker he does like to float around dropping deeper on that occasion back with Alexander Arnold in the wide area to Henderson who has scored a lot of goals from that kind of area of the pitch I thought he was about to add another to his collection unfortunately on this occasion it's not paid off you can see here United looking to work the ball up the pitch wan plays it inside, Henderson intercepts, ball dink forward to Salah, who's got to score this, he doesn't score it. De Gea with an absolutely superb save, pushing it wide. And, uh, well, unfortunately, we just couldn't quite get that shot away. I realise we've just got match stats showing twice here. What should we have on? I think focus of attacks is maybe the way to go. But yeah, 1-0, it looks like it's going to be at half-time, unless there's a late goal. <laughs> and with three minutes left, another highlight starts. The fact it's in their, their half kind of gives me a little bit of hope that maybe it's going to go our way. Although we do need to deal with this here. Martial ghosting inside, crosses it in. Matip heads it away. I mean, Trent at this point, let's have no nonsense. You know, we're 1-0 up against our big rivals. I don't want to have any awkward mistakes in a game as big as this. As much as the rivalry is a big thing, the fact this is second v third is another reason this is such a huge game for us. We need to win each and every game. And Firmino's through this time. He can't score again. De Gea, he's just a bit good, isn't he, in goal, De Gea? Saves it away. Maybe a corner can have something come from it. Falls to, was that Fabinho with the effort? Not a man I would have expected to be uh, taking a pop shot from there. It whizzes over and then, oh, the highlight has just started with Pogba scoring. Genius from Pogba. I didn't even see the goal. What happened? Just as a reminder, this is a beta version. So before half time. They score. How did this happen? Who's been Megs there? I think that was Matip. It falls to Pogba. And, I mean, it's a good finish from range from him. Against the run of play, it's the last kick of the half. Boys, I am far from pleased. What are we doing? Why are we here? Step it up. And, uh, well, they, they, maybe they've heard my calls. Because one minute into the second half, we have the ball high up the pitch. My interest is peaked. My excitement and heart rate are going. Mane, what can you do? Plays it across to Robertson. To Henderson who hits it. Jordan Henderson. It was in his circle. His area of danger. It's his eighth goal of the year. Long shots are very good at the moment in FM20. Henderson is a big beneficiary of that. But let's not take any credit away from young Jordan here. Robertson the Scot. Drifting inside. Lays it across Henderson. First time. Oh. I love that. Absolutely love that. Pings off his right foot into the top corner. Almost had one like that in the first half. Unfortunately, it didn't quite go his way. But in this half, he stepped it up. Robertson's picked up a knock. We're not going to take any chances. We're going to bring in Hendricks. For him, of course, this is exactly why I want Rigil on. It's for situations like this where um, we, we may need a left-footed, kind of more natural left-back to step in. Robertson's one of the few players in our team who, well, if he was injured for an extended period of time... I might start to panic slightly. Anyway, ball brought forward here. Diego Jota with it, and he scores his one-on-one. -on -one. We missed a few of our own. We might live to regret them. It's a lovely little finish, to be fair, by the Portuguese forward. Threaded through by Anthony Martial. They caught us out on the break. I don't know if Matip's to blame here. I feel like he needs to do a better job of picking up his man, although Joe Gomez wasn't that much better. Maybe we are missing our big commander in the heart of our defence in Van Dijk. I don't think his absence can really be underestimated. Um, I guess the one bit of fortunate news is he is only suspended for one match. So what that means is he will be back for the Arsenal game midweek, which could prove huge. Dybala, what a run this is. Can you finish it? It saved it, falls to him again, and he hits the side netting. Three clear-cut chances, two half chances, and somehow we just can't quite find a way through. Ten minutes left. I think we know what we need to do. Dybala's had an awful game. I'm going to bring in Haaland, and I'm also going to bring in Olmo. What can Haaland do for us? That's the question. Two young players being given the nod. Five minutes left. Haaland, this is your debut. This is your moment. All songs are sad, in the words of FM18. What can he do? Look for him. The big titan. Number 19. I mean, he's in the middle. Pick him out, Mo. Pick him out, Mo. Mo, what are you doing? Why did you shoot? I mean, would 2-2 be the worst result? It wouldn't be great. 
we really need to win this kind of game. There's a minute and 20 seconds left. If a goal is to be scored, it's likely the decider. And it's actually United on the break. Fortunately for us, Jota has just pinged it wide. Although another highlight with 40 seconds left. Just stop it, FM. As soon as I switch to attacking from positive, we've looked vulnerable for suddenly for the last three minutes. Ball here at the edge of the box with Fred. Now with Twan Zembe. He plays it to Luke Shaw. Can we win this and then get it up the field quickly? With 20 seconds left, I will probably take a draw from this position. But we do need to defend this here. Salah tackles him, gets it into touch. That should be all she wrote. That should be full time. 2-2, not overly happy with it. But I kind of just have to take it at the end of the day. You look at those stats in the bottom left corner. This was our game to lose. And we've lost it. And really, we only have ourselves to blame. We didn't take the chances. It's not like all the chances fell to a single person. Dybala missed some. Um, Salah missed some. Yeah, the blame is to be shared. And boys, ultimately, at the end of the day, it was not good enough. We go into a game now against Arsenal knowing we need a result. They won 3-0 Aubameyang with a hat-trick in 10 minutes. I mean, that bodes... Uh, well for us. Robertson is now out for one to three days, so he might not be available. Suso we can offer a contract to. Let's get let's get this show on the road, shall we? I want a nice, nice long deal. I don't want to give you two... Uh, I'll give you 100k. Oh, I'm going to be a hard negotiator here. I want to give you 100k and a four-year contract. Take it. 100k, four-year contract. 100k... If I, if I say it enough, there you go. Pro tip, if you want to get contract negotiations done, just shout at the game. Works most of the time. Um, but yeah, watch out. Suso is wanted by some of the big boys, Arsenal and United. So I want to get him now. Um, he would be a tremendous addition to our team. Anyway, I'm going to holiday forward. Well, not holiday forward, but continue forward to the Arsenal game. I want to get some food in me. I need to emotionally prepare for this next game. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be a big one. If we lose this, and it's a bit of a big if, but if we lose this... Our title hopes kind of go up in smoke, so let's try and do our best. Anyway, I'll be back in a second. Don't go anywhere. Okay, guys, so some good news going into this game against Arsenal. Robertson has won his fitness race. Yes, he is back, and I don't want to say raring to go, but 88% condition, 93% match sharpness. Fitness test said he can play. That's good enough for me. We're going to give him a chance. We're going to give him a run. In terms of the rest of the team... I'm not going to change anything compared to the previous match. I feel like, other than bringing in Van Dijk, um, I don't feel like we desperately need to change a great deal. I feel like now when you look with our latest squad at kind of the players on you know, the reserve list and then those on the bench and then those starting, there's kind of a more established hierarchy than there was before. Origi has now left us and Suso is yet to officially sign. So we do now have just £52 million in the bank. So if Suso was to collapse that deal, there is money just to reinvest in. But I feel like when you look at our squad on the whole now, we look quite good. Milner's contract is still running out at the end of the year. Upon reflection, and because Lalana's not got injured, I've actually opted to activate a optional year extension in his contract. So he's here for another year. Um, it was mostly about the homegrown players. As much as anything, we are struggling with homegrown players. We need more at club, which is one of the reasons why we're going in for Suso. But just in general, with us losing um, Milner, you know, we are going to be down to, what, seven homegrown players, I think, or eight homegrown players. Haaland, good news is he will get homegrown at club in three years' time. So that's actually another good reason to sign him. But, um, yeah, a little bit of fudging around still going on, but we're in a much better position than we were at the start of the year um, when it came to the homegrown player situation. One other thing I didn't talk about was the fact that I've had to make a new addition to the team, and that is Peter Herman. And that's because I believe Klopp has been given the Tottenham job, which if we check here, I'm hoping it's going to flawlessly show. Indeed, he has. And as a result of that, uh, our assistant manager, who previously, obviously, Peter Kravets... Uh, was at uh, Liverpool under Klopp, he decided to leave and join his former manager. So, yeah, that was annoying. Um, we had to get in a replacement. So, um, yeah, P please welcome in Peter here. He's pretty good, to be honest. As far as assistant managers go, really like his ability to judge player potential, most importantly. Um, I think he's going to be a good little addition for us. I will say, when it comes to these star ratings, little tip, and I've got to remember which bit it's under. I think it's under... Training, maybe? Is it? No, it's not under trainings. Is it scouting? Nope. 
which one of these is it under? And I now can't remember, and this is awkward. But um, there is a screen here. It is. So if you go to staff, you can go to advice and reports, and then you can have here player reports, and then set this to whoever. So because Herman has really good player, um, you know, judging uh, potential and current ability, uh, he makes sense to have as our kind of coach. And as a result, you might have just noticed a few of these stars changing because they're now being judged by him instead of the person they were being judged by previously. But anyway, let's get into this game. It's against Arsenal. Absolutely huge game. We rested up our team going into this match. We trail them by six points. We're two games behind them. If we lose this, even if we win our two games in hand, we'll still be three points behind them. Already played them once this year and we did very, very well. We're at home. Let's hope Lightning can strike twice. I am excited, nervous, all of the above. I just want to get into this game. It's bizarre to see Arsenal doing so well. Um, if you are managing, by the way, in the Premier League, who are the big teams who are kind of running away with the league? Or if you finished your first season, who won the league for you? I'm surprised Arsenal are doing as well as they are. They have very, very good players. But compared to, say, Man City, who currently sit now in third ahead of Manchester United... I wouldn't have said that they were a better team, and I wouldn't have expected them to be our big rivals this year, but Emery has uh, well got them doing something that he's not quite managed in real life, and that is firing on all cylinders. They've only lost one game all year. It was against us. We're hoping that we're going to be able to give them their second defeat as Ozil's shot whizzes wide. For a second, I thought that had deflected, but apparently it just curved wide, so a little bit of a let-off. Early on... Fairly close, fairly 50-50. They've had more shots and more shots on target. We've had shots not not really finding um, the, the back of the net or at least um, the target itself. We're not forcing any saves to be made. Maybe that can change here, though. Mane, options in the middle, queuing up, and he crosses it in, and Bobby Firmino is there. That's what we needed. That's that. We need more goals like that. We need to be scoring more of our kind of chances closer to goal. We can't just rely on long shots like Henderson's last game to go in to win us games. Mane with a great little run across. Of course, he got a goal last game. He's added an assist here. Only Firmino's 10th goal of the season, but it could prove to be one of his most crucial. It comes somewhat against the run of play, but we'll take it. And while we're on the attack again here, and another highlight's begun, I'm getting excited. I'm getting hopeful. Dybala... Shot is blocked. Falls to Henderson. Jordan Henderson, you absolute animal. I'm not sure what animal Jordan Henderson would be. I'm now thinking. Maybe a buffalo. I don't know why I've gone with buffalo. I, I wish I could. I, I don't know where to proceed with this. Buffalo. The buffalo Henderson. Mm -hmm. Don't think that's going to catch on. But it's 2-0 here. And that is huge. That is absolutely ridiculously good for us. A bit of breathing room. Taking the chances that have come our way. We didn't do that last game very well. This game, we've had one half chance, well, one clear cut chance we took it, and then the half chance that technically is in the half chance in game, but the long shot that's flown in. Henderson could get another here. The shot this time is blocked away. Still forced to Salah. Apparently, that was a clear cut chance, so disappointed we couldn't force the keeper to make a save. But um, some good defending by Arsenal there. And uh, 30 minutes on, can't really fault the players. Ball whipped in here. Can we get another? Gomez narrowly heads it over. That wasn't far away, was it? We are creating chance after chance after chance right now. I want a third in this game. Salah should be able to get it. He's clean through it. Deflects for Mino. Can't quite get a toe on it. Leno in the end plucking the ball from his toes. Shot of by Salah kind of deflected and ricocheted off a defender. And you thought Bobby might get there. Maybe a better chance to be carved out here, though. Whipped in Gomez, saved by the keeper. Mane into the danger area, and Fabinho's there to make it 3-0 before half-time. It's like the earlier half to the season. We beat Arsenal at the start of last kind of half of season, whatever you want to call it. Last time we met Arsenal, we beat them. Last time we met Manchester United, we drew against them. I mean, at least we're consistent. A lovely little header, by the way, by Mane. That's a really intelligent one. Could have very easily tried to go for goal. Instead, nodded it across, put it in the danger area. 25 seconds left. They have a goal kick. Are we about to see a defensive calamity? I want to believe it could happen. Alexander Arnold wins it. Firmino to Salah. Bang that in. He's tried to chip the keeper. He's, I can't be mad because he's done it a few times successfully so far this year. But that probably wasn't the time to do it. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from happy. They absolutely love it. They're all fired up. They don't care about the fact that it's 3-0. They understand that I just want us to keep going. I'm not happy, boys. I know we can play even better than that. I know we can take more of our chances. Let's do it here. Two minutes into this half. Robertson crosses it in. 
all the way across to Alexander Arnold, who plays it to Henderson, who hits the woodwork this time. Falls to Fabinho, who hits it. Leno it makes the save. Wow, a chance after chance after chance. It's another goal kick with Arsenal. This is this is how you want to see all highlights start. Three clear cut chances now and three half chances, and yet it's only three nil. Doesn't feel like one of those games where we're going to live to rue our missed chances, but well. It would be nice to inflict some damage on their goal difference. I'm unsure if head-to-head -head or um, goal difference kind of takes, uh, what's the word, priority when it comes to sorting out the league. Shakiri coming on against us. I mean, he's not going to do anything in the last half an hour. We're going to be fine, he says. At 3 nil up, we're going to make some changes. I'm going to bring in Henricks. Uh, I'm also going to bring uh, off Andy Robertson, I think, just for the sake of fitness. Um, and you know what? We'll take off Henderson as well. I know he's got a goal, but I'm going to bring in Keita. Um, just getting in some fresh legs, a bit of rotation. Wijnaldum's looked pretty good so far this year. Keita, a player who I'd like to give more game time to if possible. 3 0 up at home. Not many matches, you know, with 10 minutes left where you've got a better chance to give a few slightly more fringe players perhaps some game time and also just preserve players' legs. We ask a lot out of our fullbacks getting up and down the pitch. Um, and naturally, they do get tired. And with this being a midweek game, having played at the weekend, if I can just save the legs of Trent and uh, Robertson, it feels like it's probably a worthwhile decision. Anyway, we're going to try and win the ball here. Henricks wins it and then instantly loses it. Mane, though, now with Dybala, dinks it through to Mo Salah. What can he do? Plays it inside to Firmino, who scores. And, I mean, we'll take that. It's 4-0 here. That is game over. If it wasn't game over already, it's done now. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it. Nice bit of build-up play. I thought for a second Salah was going to be greedy and go on his own and just miss a great chance. Instead, really intelligently, Fred's through his uh, his forwarding crime. And Firmino, now on for a hat-trick. Is it possible? I don't know. It's going to be difficult for him to get it with five minutes left, but if anyone's going to do it, he's the man, I think. Anyway, Guendouzi back to goal. Goes back to Maitland-Niles, who switches it to Hector Bellerin. I'd like to keep the clean sheet if we can. Shakiri, our former man, hits the woodwork. That is a slight heart-in-mouth moment, but we we get through it. We live through it. And now a corner to deal with here. Shakiri to try and whip it in, perhaps. Goes to the back post. Aubameyang can't get there. Salah collects. Is the highlight about to end, or can we unleash the counter-attack of a sentry? Dybala, he's through. He should score this. He should score this. He doesn't score it. Leno... With a fantastic stop. And uh, well, we could have really embarrassed them there. We could have had a fifth. We could still have a fifth, mind you. But, uh, well, you can see here the time is just trickling away. Two minutes left. Make that 30 seconds. Make that full time. 4-0. Firmino, man of the match. Salah. Uh, Salah. Alisson with seven saves. It would have been an achie achievement if... Um, if Salah had made seven saves. What was Alisson's average rating there? A 7.6... I don't want to speak too soon, but I feel like goalkeeper ratings in FM20 might have been fixed. Anyway, Shakiri suffers defeat against former club. Firmino was the man. Guardiola apparently scouting out Firmino. I mean, we're going to big you up, mate. If people are going to make a bid, it's going to have to be a mighty fine one for me to even consider selling you at this point. Um, I mean, only six goals in 16 games, to be fair. It's not like he's been the most prolific goal scorer in the world. But he, he offers us a hell of a lot, and he's kind of shown that in this game here. Anyway, with that result, we close the gap on Arsenal to three points. We do still have two games in hand on them. In terms of when we'll be back, we've got what should be some theoretically easier games against the likes of Brighton, West Ham, uh, and Sheffield United. Uh, looking further ahead, we could potentially do Everton. If you guys would like to see that, do let me know. If not, we'll come back for the Leipzig game towards the end of February. Um, yeah, that could be a pretty tight, tasty game in the first leg uh, of the Champions League first knockout round. Um, I'm just wondering if we've had any um, updates from our youth candidates. And actually, we have. Apparently, there is a good American forward from Illinois who's caught the eye. I mean, that sounds exciting and luxurious. And now, it's no longer a bad group of players. It's now a mediocre group of players. I mean... It's not glowing words, Alex, but I'll take your word for it and hopefully it can get better between now and March. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up everything from me today. A bit of a mixed bag. Uh, let me know what you've made of our transfers. Suso in, 
Um, obviously, Regillion in and also Haaland in. And then on the outs, Origi and Shakiri. I feel like it's smart business. I feel like we come through it looking like the better team. Of course, Suso not done just yet. Hopefully, when you're back next time, he will be. But yeah, that is really everything from me now. Hopefully, you enjoyed. I'll see you again soon. It is me, Jack. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.